The World Trade Organization says fragmentation of the global economy would be extremely costly and make the world a less stable place. In its annual report, the Geneva-based trade body says geopolitical tensions among major economies are beginning to affect trade flows. Policymakers are being urged to pursue greater international cooperation and broader economic integration, an approach the WTO described as re-globalization. Victor Salzenberg is a research economist at the World Trade Organization. Essentially what we've seen is, is, is kind of a three-step process away from, from, from the multilateral trading system. Essentially it started with the poly crisis in health, um, the financial crisis before, geopolitical tensions, shifting the narratives around global trade, right? Like for, for essentially seven decades, we had a shared understanding that increased trade and economic interdependence would lead to, to more prosperity and to more peace across the world. And this has really changed over the past decade, where, where now the story is more and more um, that less interdependence and more economic independence is the solution to the crisis of of today. And we see now that this changed narrative essentially is affecting more and more also trade policy here at the WTO and beyond. The report says that uh, today's world needs more trade and more cooperation, not less. Uh, how do you see that being achieved? Uh, I mean, what we see right now is that members at the WTO, for instance, they are pushing in the right direction. Um, it's not always the most visible things, but the stuff is happening. The trade facilitation agreement, for instance, in 2013, the fishery subsidies agreement last year, there are a lot of reform talks um, that, that go on right now. So there is a momentum pushing back, but we need to keep this momentum going. The next ministerial conference uh, of the WTO next year um, is, is a key event for this. Uh, and obviously, one thing that we try to do in the Secretariat is through this evidence-based reporting that, that this report, for instance, um, entails that we, tr that we try to convince members that tr truly reglobalization is a much better answer to, to many of the problems we see. Because the concerns that have led to fragmentations are real and they are justified. It's, it's the concern that inequality is increasing. It's the concern that, that climate change is accelerating. And it's, it's a concern that economic insecurity and, and conflict are on the rise. And too often trade has been seen as part of the problem over the re recent years. But when we look at the evidence, what we, it's, and that's what we do at the report, it turns out that, that the truth is really the opposite. It's, trade can be an important part of the solution to all of these, these key problems. What about the, the challenges we've seen in global supply chains? Uh, what needs to change uh, to make them work, uh, given the current situation? Yeah, yeah, in a way, this is actually what we ask for when, when we talk about reglobalization, because countries are correct in pointing out that we have seen too much concentration in global trade, that individual players in certain products um, have, have too large of a market share, and whenever they are hit by, by a shock, and it doesn't matter what that shock is. I mean, right now there's a lot of focus on geopolitical tensions, but obviously with climate change, we will see um, many more unexpected uh, natural disasters hitting. So that is a problem. And we think that, that part of the problem is that, for instance, trade costs remain very high for, for developing economies and in certain sectors. Trade costs in agriculture, I think, are almost 50% higher than, than in manufacturing. Trade costs in services are 30% higher than in manufacturing, which means that production in these, in these goods can naturally not disperse because it's, it's just too costly. And by lowering this, we can get much more diversified supply chains. And diversified supply chains are the answer to resilient supply chains. Because putting all your eggs in one basket, and it doesn't matter if it's your basket or someone else's, that will always create problems. Um, and it doesn't matter if this is what you perceive as a friend or as an adversary, because you don't know what kind of shocks will hit you in the future. They could be geopolitical, but as I said, they can also be driven by climate change or like the pandemic. So it can hit essentially anyone. And the, the best solution to this is just diversification.